All good? Yep. All righty. I think we are ready to go. Is that recording? I've got my fiance doing my camera work. Uh, can I just get someone to throw a message to make sure you can hear me in the uh, Zoom? Corey's got me and uh, you can see me okay? It's not blurry. Beautiful. All righty. Well, thank you uh, for joining us for part three uh, of the Masterclass series for uh, the first ever one we've launched here at the Rail Society. Uh, it's fair to say it's been an absolute success and uh, we have absolutely loved the feedback that we've had um, from our Rail Society family. Uh, we hope that you guys have taken something out of this um, as much as we've enjoyed delivering this to your doorstep. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to Tom from Smoky Pastures and Javen from uh, Postal Barbecue over in Canada for hosting the first two sessions. Uh, they were absolutely fantastic. Uh, well, I think we really learned something. I, I um, love Tom's tips on how to, uh, we're just sort of comparing American style ribs, which is what we might be seeing on, on YouTube when you're watching, you know, some of the big guys are completely different to the ribs that we have here in Adelaide. You know, the three, two, or sorry, in Australia, the three, two, one method doesn't always really work. Uh, so he gave us some great tips. Um, and as well as Jaden uh, from Postal, the, the pork loin recipe, giving you that pulled pork flavour without having to cook it for eight hours. I mean, we all love pulled pork at the best of times. It's probably one of my favourite barbecue recipes, but uh, to be able to whip that pork loin up within two to three hours is just absolutely fantastic. So a big thank you to them. If you haven't gone back and, and watched them, jump onto our YouTube channel, which launched at the start of this series. Uh, you can go and watch every single one of them uh, from there. Now, uh, obviously, if you saw my email this evening, you would have seen that Aaron is an apology tonight from Low and Slow Basics. Uh, even when you try and do uh, Zoom or uh, virtual masterclasses, COVID still finds its way to, to interrupt it. So uh, Aaron sends his apologies to everybody. Um, and we, uh, Aaron does not have COVID from what I know, so this is me saying he has COVID, uh, but it's just been some difficulties with uh, you know, close contacts and whatnot, which has made, made life not only hard for Aaron this week, but probably everybody at the moment. So uh, from the Rub Society, we do hope that you're staying safe out there. So tonight, what are we getting into? We're going to get into steak. So steak is probably one of my favourite uh, things to cook. I think beef is an incredible piece of meat, but when you've got the right piece of beef and you complement that with the right cooking style, you can really really uh, impress some friends um, and, and impress, uh, you know, anyone that comes over to, to cook it. So tonight I've, uh, we're reverse searing a steak. So I do need to put in a little bit of a disclaimer. This beautiful kitchen that stands behind me right now is not mine. It is actually my in-laws. I have had to rush up to their house as it is. Uh, if you're from Adelaide, it is blowing it. Well, it's not blowing a gale, but it's certainly windy. So when you're trying to do these types of things with wind, it's quite hard. So... We've reversed, uh, we, we've, the steak's been cooking for about an hour already. We've quickly transported it up here. I've got it in the oven just sort of keeping warm. We are going to keep this nice and live though. So we are about to move out over to the grill and that's where we're going to do the searing. And then what we'll do is once we've seared it, we'll bring it back inside here. We'll let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and then whilst we uh, let it rest, we'll, I'll sort of go into steak a little bit more. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, and uh, please uh, stand by us while we do this, we are just going to move over to outside uh, and uh, we will, we'll get the steering underway. All right.
All righty. How are we looking over here? We're going to start that video now. See if I can angle it down for you. Uh, how's that looking? Can we see the, uh, can we see the weather there? It's going to be about as good as, uh, as good as it gets, I reckon. Just give that one a little bit of a clean up there. Yeah. Um, Instagram's going well. Beautiful. All right, so what we've done now is I'll, actually, I'll keep this shut. Uh, hopefully you guys can see me. This is a little bit improvised, so we'll see what we can do. Uh, so what we've done, we've smoked the tomahawk here for about an hour, okay? So that's the tomahawk looking now. We've got it over there as well for you. So we've smoked this for an hour. So we used a mixture of Aaron's uh, steak shooter, which you can grab on our website, uh, as well as one of our exclusive suppliers, the Butcher's Cut Texas Dirt. So what we did is we covered the, uh, the steak in the rub. Uh, we let it sit for about 15 to 20. I don't like using binders on beef. I know you don't taste binders when you, uh, when you eat um, your meat, but I don't know, I just get funny about it. Uh, so I don't use binders when I, when I cook with my beef. I let the, the, uh, I let the rubs adhere to it ourselves. So what we've done, we've popped it in the smoker for an hour and we're just gonna let it suck in as much smoke as it can over that time. We then get it to that temperature. Now this is obviously, subject to where you want to cook it. I like to go towards that medium red, which means I want to get it to about the 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So once it's at the 120 degrees Fahrenheit, we bring it over here onto a, onto a hot uh, grill, depending on where you are, you can reverse see this on your Weber. You can then fire up your Weber whilst you take it off. So you can sear it back on the Weber that you've used. Uh, I use, uh, if I use my pellet smoker, sometimes I'll do the smoking on the pellet smoker and then I'll just move it over to the barbecue for the, for the searing. It, it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's about what works for you. So now we've got it here. We've got it at that 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Why do I use Fahrenheit? I use Fahrenheit because every video I've ever watched growing up smoking is in Fahrenheit because it's American and it's just easier than trying to convert it all the time. So unfortunately I can't do the conversions for you at one what 120 degrees Fahrenheit is, maybe Rory, uh, sorry, not Rory, Corey or Michael, don't even know my own business partner's names, maybe Corey or Michael could give a, uh, maybe a Google and put it in the chat as to just what 120 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. So we've got it to 120 degrees. I'm just gonna pop it on here. It's mighty hot. There you go, I'll get that one over there for you. So we just wanna do a couple of minutes on each side. essentially what we've done and this is where it varies from the traditional method so traditionally people would sear the meat first and then pop it into the oven um, and then cook it from there i think in the smoking community we, we, we reversed it just what's called reverse seared uh steak so we've done that smoking aspect of it first we've let the smoke adhere into the into the beef we've got it to that turn and then we're just going to finish it off with a quick sear as well <coughs> Daniel, can you hear me? Yeah, I've got you. Yeah, uh, we just got a question in the chat. Uh, what temperature was the uh, was the Weber running at when you um, when you had it just or the smoker running at? Smoker. So the smoker is you want to run it between that two hundred and fifty to two hundred and seventy five range. Most commonly, two, uh, and one, sorry, once again, I'm always going to talk in Fahrenheit. So two hundred and seventy five Fahrenheit is about the about the goal i run my if i took this morning uh, sorry today i did it on my pellet smoker so i ran it at 250 because that's where it's set and it still works fine so we've seared that one there just move it around there i'll be back in two seconds didn't need to go anywhere it was in my pocket the whole time this is going well Okay, so now we've let that see it. Just gonna crank that up a little bit more. Now you can see that I'm being a little bit sloppy with it. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because we've used our butcher's cut Texas dirt. Now Texas dirt is, if you've never cooked steak, oh, if you've ever want to cook steak for your friends and you want to impress them, I'd be using something like a Texas dirt. If not, you've also got hardcore carnivore, which is one that we sell giving you that black char flavor um, and, and color and look on the actual, on the actual um, steak. 
that's why I'm not bothering with the sear lines today because you can't see them as it is because the, the rub's gone over the top of it anyway. So just put it out there. Uh, you can either let us know on the Instagram comments or pop it in the in the Zoom chat. Has anyone never tried reverse seed before? Or has, it, does, has everyone done it? Yeah, getting a few answers there on the Instagram by the looks of it. Yeah, so I had to admit I had never reverse seed till about an, a year ago. Um, and then once I've done it once, it is probably the only way I ever cook my steak from here on in. So what I'm going to do now, just get your instant read thermometer. Sitting at about that, you yeah, at about that 130 range there. I reckon that's going to be about ready to go. So it doesn't need long when you're searing it. Now I'm just going to pull it off. Tomahawks are a huge piece of meat, absolutely huge. So we've done that one there. We're going to move back inside. Uh, and then once again, just bear with us for 30 seconds while we move over. We're going to let this rest. And we're going to go into beef and exactly what you need when you're, when you're looking for beef a little more in, in depth. Uh, and then we'll cut it open and we'll take a look. So bear with us. Thanking you. Everyone got me loud and clear on Zoom. And I have got it here as well. Um, I'm just looking at myself on Instagram live on my fiance's phone. That way here I can have a look at the comments. So what do we have here? Source line slow. Uh, Anyone source on those products on our website, absolutely love him. Uh, he's based up in Brisbane. He's an absolute champion. So definitely recommend getting around some of his products. And I don't want to uh, give away too many secrets, but uh, we will be launching part two or series two of our masterclass series. And we're hoping to get the guys source on so on board with us uh, very, very soon. So yeah, we've got a few people in here. Love, I love reverse searing. Um, yeah, reverse seed, one reverse seed, never go back, and completely agree. So, steak traditionally depends how much time I, I've got up my sleeve, if I'm honest. So, if I've just got a couple of um scotch fillets or whatnot, uh, quite often I'll just cook them on the barbecue or I'll do um the basting, so I'll do a butter, garlic, and thyme type recipe. Uh, but when I've got a little bit of time up my sleeve, I'll, I'll, I'll get amongst doing something. Like a, like a reverse here, because I think the, the flavour is just absolutely incredible. So let's talk about steak. We've got here, we've got the tomahawk resting, ready to go. I don't want to move too much, so I don't want the juices everywhere. Tomahawk, probably one of the most, uh, how do I put it, decorative pieces of meat I think there is out there on the market. It uh, certainly, I mean, have a look at that bone. If you've got a dinner party and you rock up or you serve your dinner party with a bone like that, I think your friends are going to be pretty impressed. Um, so I'll be honest, I don't cook with tomahawks too often uh, because you've got this big bit of uh, bone here, which if I'm only cooking for my fiance uh, and I, it's, you know, 
sort of uh, not really needed. So my go-to piece of meat is a ribeye. So I quite often use ribeye because essentially ribeye is just this this aspect of your um, of your of your tomahawk. So that's quite often um, my go-to. So I thought what I'd talk to you about is I'm just going to take a quick sip. Um, I thought I'd talk uh, talk to you about what I look for in steak. So if I'm doing a reverse sear, the first thing that you need to look for is you need thickness. You cannot, well, you can, but you're not going to get the best quality product if you're trying to reverse sear a one inch size steak. Not going to work. You want this thickness uh, like you're seeing here. You want this thickness in your steak because it gives more time, longer a longer cook time, which gives the smoke a lot longer to, to come on over and and sort of start working with the meat. So you want to thick a piece of meat uh, as much as you can. Um, my biggest advice, if I've got any advice for anyone about steak, do not cheap out on steak. Steak is not something that you can, well, you shouldn't be. I mean, everyone's entitled to do their own. Barbecue is very personal, so do what you want. Um, but if I was, if it was me, I would not be cheaping out on beef because you can taste the difference if you if you get if you use a cheap cut of a chicken or a cheap cut of pork you can sometimes hide that uh, the flavor you might be missing in a more expensive cut because you know if you're doing the pulled pork you're covering it in you know probably like a barbecue sauce or a glaze or whatnot with beef you want to um, and i've written it here in my notes you want to keep it simple and that's that uh, segues into me into my next part which is um with beef and your rubs keep it simple you want the beef to do the talking. You don't want to be overpowering the. Um, you don't want to be overpowering the meat with rubs. So I did a very light coating of um, steak shooter line slow basics. Uh, probably one of our top selling rubs. So if you haven't tried Aaron's line slow, um, his steak shooter, please give it a go. I did a light coating with that because I love the flavours. And then once again over the top because I was doing that charcoal style beef. Uh, if I'm just keeping it simple, I'll quite often lean towards uh, Tom's at Smoky Pastures. I'll use his um, his uh, salt pepper garlic uh, because you know, I think we've all learned that in Texas they quite often say it is um, they, quite, they quite often say in, in Texas that it was just salt and pepper. But you know, with all the YouTubers that I've got, and it might have been mad scientists, they've started to do a little bit of research. That, all those pit masters have always been putting a bit of garlic in there too. So keep it simple when you're putting your rubs on your beef. You don't want to overpower the flavour of it. And buy a good quality cut because you will taste the difference. You'll taste cheap beef a lot more than you will taste um, to, uh, cheap you know, pork or chicken. Trimming, when trimming beef, I keep it pretty, pretty simple, uh, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't really touch it too much uh, because... I mean, I don't know how well you can see this, but I'll, I'll turn it around here and try and get as close. We'll go to the guys on Zoom first, our Masterclass subscribers. Uh, you know, look at that fat. That is absolutely incredible. And over to you guys over here on Instagram, uh, just look at that. That is just... Oh, all right, put in the comments now. Are you at, There's two types of people. There's the fat people. Oh, geez, that didn't sound right, did it? There's people who like fat and there's people who uh, prefer a, a more of a trim style meat. So chuck in, uh, chuck in the comments whether or not you think it's, uh, if you're a, uh, a fat man a, or a woman, you like a, a nice juicy bit of rendered fat or whether you like to keep your, your beef style meat um, quite lean. So I'm just gonna have a look now here. We do have a few steak shooters. Here is the bomb, absolutely agree. Let the beef sing 100%. Risk it 100% agree as well. Open the beef up clean, smoke cleaner up, smoke is the king. Yeah, exactly right, mate. Exactly right. So, look, I don't really know how much more I need to go into it. We've let this rest probably probably nearly at that 10 minute mark. And you can see here, have a look at uh, the juices that are starting to come out of it, which means that you know you've got a good quality cut of beef right there to say the least. So, I think without further ado, let's cut it open and um, sort of see how we go. I'm going to try and cut this 
the best that I can present to style. Uh, what I'm also going to grab though is just some paper towel or a tea towel in a kitchen that's not my own. Here we are. A little bit of uh, just a good piece of towel. Alrighty. So on Instagram, can you guys see this okay if I was to cut it in this position? Someone chuck it in the comments now and let me know. Actually, I can sort of see it there. Yep, beautiful. And the Zoom guys as well. Someone just give me a yep or a, a thumbs up or something like that. I just, this is what you've all come to sort of see. All right, let's have a look and let's sort of see how we've gone. How do we want to do this? Usually, I'll just come across here. We do have this beautiful bit of uh, bone here. What does everybody think? Does meat taste better off the bone? Here we go. Have a look at that fat rendering down there. So there's your tomahawk. That's the money maker. You got your friends over. I definitely recommend doing this at least once. Just getting a nice piece of tomahawk steak like that. You can already see some pink sauce. Geez, I'm hoping they're on the money and I have never felt more pressure than what I do right now, uh, cutting open a piece of beef that I've been cooking for over an hour to present live, hoping for that medium rare. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Yep. Uh, I'm just gonna pinch one of these off first. Instagram, what do we think? Put it in the comments, let me know. And Zoom, what do we reckon, guys? I don't want to pump my own trumpet, but for a bloke who has never cooked live, I've never done any form of professional cooking, I, uh, I think we may have nailed that. I think we may have nailed that. Let's get a little bit further into it, hey? So we do have, here we go, this goes into that discussion before. Who would be taking this bit? Nice big bit of fat. Nice big bit of fat there and some perfectly tender style beef there as well. Who would be getting into that part there? All right, so I'm just going to trim some of that off. There we go. So you can see here, this was a rather fatty piece of um, ribeye if I've ever, uh, sorry, not ribeye, tomahawk if I've ever had one, but let's just get this cut open. If you haven't had dinner, it only takes an hour. You could be eating by, I'm not sure what the time is, what's the time now at the moment? Uh, you could be eating in about an hour's time if you've got a piece of steak sitting around. It's not too late to get one of these on the grill. Wow, wait, wow, wait. All right, let's have another look. So these bits here, uh, I've, I mean, I've just moved them to the side for now uh, because I don't, we don't need them for the live demo, but I mean, there's still quite a bit of meat left in some of these areas as well. Um, but let's have a look at some of these cuts here. So the thing that I love, have a look at that crust. Just there, hopefully you guys can sort of see that there. That's that Texas dirt I was talking about. So it just gives this amazing crust on the outside, which to me, that is the bit that's gonna wow your friends because anyone can put a steak in a pan with some garlic and some rosemary, but not anybody can put an amazing crust on beef like so. Have a look at that. Well, I think there's only really one thing left to do and that's probably to get stuck into it. I've had my eyes on this piece the whole time. I don't want to pump my own trumpet, but that is, what happens if you swear on an Instagram live stream? I'm not, I'm not too sure. That is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's just try and show you guys at home just how tender that was. Look at that, just absolutely falling apart. Look at that pink color as well. There'd be some people going out here that you're rare beef eaters that would be saying that it's overcooked 
there'd be some people like my fiance that's sitting behind the camera probably pulsating at the fact that there's still blood in it. She likes to do what I call uh, just ruining a piece of meat um, and that's uh, cooking it well done. Um, so there we go. What I might do is I might get down on my fiance. Can you just, fortunately for the guys on Zoom, I can't just get a bit of a close up look in at some of the state there for the guys on Instagram. And let's have a look. Yeah, completely agree, Corey. A bit of chichuri across the top would be absolutely incredible. There you go. So that's for those guys there on Instagram. That's that colour that you're looking for. You're looking for that perfect medium rare in the middle. Um, and that has been absolutely nailed. So beautiful. All right, well, what we'll do is um, well, there's not much more from me. That's a reverse seed steak. Uh, is there any questions either in the Zoom or on the Instagram live feed? Just feel free to shout out and let me know if you've got any questions about how it's done. Um, here we go. I've got one from Matt. Suggestions on sides or sauces? So I'm probably about to insult a lot of people with uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, Americans here, but sauce wise. Once again, I don't like putting too much sauce on a steak like this, but a, a nice Burmese sauce would go beautiful with it. Um, you could maybe spice up a bit of gravy. Like there is some juice floating around in here, which you could then use in, in some of your gravies later on. Uh, so that's what I would be uh, suggesting there. In terms of sides, this is where I might be a little bit different. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of too heavy of sides. So what I mean by that is... I like one heavy side, so Aussies, potato bake. Uh, check out our TikTok for the potato bake recipe if you haven't been on there yet. Um, so I like a nice potato bake or uh, with a lime salad. But I don't like, you know, a mac and cheese and a potato salad and a coleslaw. If you've ever been to the USA and you, you've gone to a Texas barbecue, they will, um, they will <laughs> you, you, your plate will be absolutely loaded. Um, and then uh, the other one would be just some grilled veg as well. Was it Matt? Yeah, Matt, just some grilled veg, mate. Keep it simple. Broccolini is an absolute go-to for me. Um, just some simple grilled veg or some carrot. Just when I'm cooking steak, just like the steak itself, I like to keep it. Um, I like to keep it simple. So uh, that would be my question uh, answer there. Um, what else have we got? I've seen people rest the steak in between the reverse here and then dig in straight after the search. Any preference? Let me just read that one again their steak in between so uh thanks manis tend to yeah and corey's just said um uh corey's just said then that that's his method as well i have definitely done that before uh sometimes if you're you know it depending on piece of meat you know and we all know this with barbecue sometimes you cook a lot quicker than what you thought you allow yourself an hour and a half and you end up getting it done in that hour so i have definitely done that before uh, and, and seeing that it works just fine because the main thing is is that you want to get it to that 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it will continue to cook when obviously when you rest it, just like every other cut of meat. So if you're letting it rest at 120, it might roll up to 122 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit and then you just sear it. Just take into consideration the fact that you have got it there because the amount of time that you sear it for a couple of minutes on each side will be... Um, We'll bring that. We'll get that heat back into it so that it's it's ready to be served. So that would be my question there. I did see another question here from Matt. Do I rest it in alfoil? If so, how long for? Uh, so today I didn't rest it in alfoil. It depends on the climate, Matt. So obviously, uh, assuming you might be from Australia, uh, pretty good weather at the moment. Um, so, and also once again, it leans back on: Am I serving it uh, straight away? So if I'm Serving it, you know, straight away within 10 or 15 minutes. No, I'll just, I'll just let it rest at room temperature and I'll bring it down a bit and have it ready to serve. Uh, if I need to rest it for, uh, um, if I ever feel like I need to rest it for a little bit longer, I will pop our foil on top. One thing that I do get a little bit worried about with our foil at times is, like I said, with this crust that we've made with the Texas dirt, um, I am a little bit of a believer in sometimes when you wrap a product, uh, the crust can be. Uh, not destroyed, but you don't probably get those amazing flavours that you're exactly looking for. Um, uh, Daniel, we've got a question on the Zoom from Kyle, yep. just about how do you go about creating and releasing your own rubs commercially? 
Can you say that one again, Corey? Yeah. How do you go about creating and releasing your own rubs commercially? Okay. So by the sounds of it, I'm thinking Kyle, is maybe Kyle playing with some flavours at home and, and wants to look at possibly releasing his own? Is that the vibe of that question? Carl, if you can put it, Kyle, sorry, put a yes or no in that chat. Yeah, perfect. So I've got just the man for you. Uh, the team out at Source Low and Slow can give you a hand. I'm more than happy to, to pop you in contact with him. Um, he can certainly steer you in the right direction for uh, what, you, what you need to do to make your own rub. From what I understand, um, that is that you play with some flavours at home, which you probably have already started doing. Once you've settled on something, then you're going to just, there's two ways you can do it. You can either do it yourself and you just need to get the proper equipment to do it yourself. But quite often a lot of the, you know, a lot of the rub companies, Kyle, uh, are going out to people who make them in bulk. You will find that a lot of your Aussie products are all made at the one factory um, or, you know, sorry, when I say one factory, a couple of factories. Uh, so that's quite often what a lot of people do. Um, and that's, but I've got a contact that I can put you, uh, I've got someone I can put you in contact with um, and they will, I think they do, um, Michael Thompson might be able to jump in if he wants to turn his mic on at all. That means he'd actually have to put his face, well, he doesn't have to put his face to the company, but he can put his voice to the company. company. Uh, I think they'll send you a couple of testers. So you, you tell them what you want. So it would be paprika, salt, pepper, garlic powder, however you want to do it. And then they will make it, send it to you, let you try it. Send it. I think they send you two or maybe three, and then you settle on um, an ingredient. Michael, am I on the right track there? Yeah, it's a long, long. <clears throat> it can be a long process to get it right, but through that method, you, through that process, you will get a few uh, sample rubs along the way. <coughs> okay, I've got another question here from Matt saying, "Ever seed with butter?" One thing I didn't do here because I was using the Texas dirt is I didn't do, usually I'll base it with uh, butter throughout the cook. So um, if I wasn't using Texas dirt, once again, going back to that bark aspect, I mean, just have a look at that on the, on the side of the bone there. That is absolutely incredible. So if I wasn't using uh, Texas dirt, uh, yes, I usually um, base it with butter about every, 20 minutes, real simple. Just get yourself a little um, little uh, cooking cooking dish that you can pop in your smoker. Just keep that um, keep that butter melted, and then just baste it every every sort of 20 minutes, um, and then that'll keep it nice and juicy. And then sometimes what I will do, you jump onto our so a lot of our media is on TikTok at the moment, guys. I can officially say today that we will be launching some YouTube cooking videos as well. So what we essentially do on our TikTok is if you are on TikTok, if you're not on TikTok, get on it. Um, what we because you can follow us. Don't worry about everybody else on the. We're the only ones you need to follow. So you can jump on the TikTok um, and you you see on one of my reverse seared one that I at, right at the end. So if I was serving this for um, this for friends, uh, I would serve it like that. I'll make it a little bit neater than what it is now, um, and then I would probably go ahead and just drizzle some. Uh, butter over the top, maybe mix in a little bit of garlic with that butter too. I'm, I'm a sucker for garlic, so uh, absolutely love that one there. Beautiful. All righty. Is there anything else before we wrap it up? Any questions? This is the last one of the series, so we will sort of be going quiet from here on in in terms of our... Um, in terms of our uh, master classes, but who knows? We've had some pretty good traction over on the on the on the live stream on Instagram, so we might we might do that a little bit more um, going into the future. But no, I reckon we're probably ready to wrap that one up now. So look, all I want to say, uh, I said it at the start, and I'll say it again. A big thanks to all of our pit masters, pit masters and suppliers that have uh, come along with us on this journey. From everyone at the Rub Society, from Michael and Corey and myself, there's three of us involved. We started this business because like every single other person you talk to in barbecue, it was just our passion. And, and if I'm honest, we were going through a bit of, probably a bit of a tough time at work and barbecue was a little bit of an escape for us. Um, so we, that was what we all sort of you know, bonded over very closely. Uh, and that was where the Rub Society was born. 
the support that we've received from everybody. If you haven't, um, if you haven't, g'day Shay, it's LA the Shay Show. A uh, big, big, big plug to uh, Adelaide Athletica, a soccer club down in Adelaide working with inclusive um, kids with uh, uh, disabilities or troubles that uh, are struggling to, to uh, you know, Obviously, playing those major leagues, I've got an inclusive team there. So, big shout out to Shades and the team down at um, to the team down at Adelaide Athletic. I'm sorry for that plug, but I absolutely love that club and everything they're doing for um, everyone out there at um, Adelaide Athletic. But on behalf of on behalf of us, the, the support that we have received from everybody uh, in the past three or four months has gone well and truly beyond where we thought it would. You know, starting an online business is never easy um and we hope one day to get a physical store where we can start to put some names to faces there is some exciting things coming in the pipeline in terms of the rub society and what we have planned like i said tonight we have just announced our youtube channel this is all stuff that we probably had planned in the next 12 months 24 months but because we've been overwhelmed with the support um and and, and how well it's done so far we, we thought we might try and just get a, a few more, a bit more stuff out there soon. So uh, if you haven't already, jump onto our website. We're going to be offering, Michael, you're going to need to get a discount going on the website. We're going to offer special discounts. The 10% off um, Aaron Lonslow, uh, his um, state shooter rub, which is what we use tonight. We've done this with all of our rubs, as well as our Texas dirt. Uh, so Michael's probably scourging onto the website now to get that one put in, uh, but also we do have um, Aaron from Lawrence Slow State Shooter and his Garlic Goals 2 for 30. That deal got launched this week as well. So, look, the biggest thing about us at the Rub Society is we're a community. We want to work with you guys. So if there's anyone that you want us to, to get on board or there's any rubs that you've tried, Kyle, keep us in the loop of how your rubs go. We just want to support as many um, Aussie businesses as we can and, and grow this area as much as we can. So... Apart from that, that will be me signing off. Before we go, just take one more look at that beef. Isn't that some of the most tender beef you've ever seen? Well, I'm going to go and get stuck into this. You guys have a great night. Make sure you hit us up on our socials because that's where we can interact with you guys over the next few months. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.